Chapter 11 Dane was panting, dehydrated, and hungry, but his determination kept him going. There was still plenty of daylight as he marched on with only the slightest idea of where Allie was. Allie! He yelled between shortened breaths. He listened for a response, but the only response was from the whistling wind through the trees. Looking in all directions, he wasn't exactly sure what to do. He contemplated heading back, but would likely regret it if Allie never returned. He needed a moment to collect his thoughts. Seeing a small skipping stone at his feet, he bent down to pick it up. There was something soothing about rubbing the smooth surface between his fingers. Dane was intrigued. As a man without possessions, it was understandable that he found comfort in such an insignificant item to collect and call his own. It was a way he could retain some sense of normalcy. He did that for a while, before slipping the flattened stone into his pocket and continuing onward. Ahead of him was the same steep embankment that Allie and Lauren had encountered. He figured it was worth ascending to see what was on the other side. Due to the grueling work and being in the woods without any of his usual comforts, Dane's body was beginning to wear down rapidly. It had been nearly two days without any substantial food or water, and he was fatigued. The sun was also beating down on him, making his condition even worse. His dry mouth and throat begged for water and his stomach growled loudly. He was also suffering from a dehydration headache, severe hunger, and malnutrition, poor hygiene, muscle fatigue, and a host of other ailments. He desperately needed to find sustenance. With labored breaths and sluggish movement, Dane eventually made it to the top of the mound and collapsed from exhaustion. Now, with a view of the other side, he saw what appeared to be a dead body. Narrowing his focus, he studied the man, who was lying face down and not moving. Dane was too far away to see if the man was breathing or not. For that, he would definitely need to get closer. Nevertheless, it was the first indication that he was on the right track, so he was excited about his discovery. Dane approached with caution, as it was a peculiar scene to stumble upon. He was utterly defenseless. Even if he had some kind of weapon, he didn't have the energy nor skill to put up much of a fight. His mental capacity was also seriously hindered. Dane treaded lightly toward the body. He kept a watchful eye on his surroundings to ensure he wasn't walking into a trap. Spotting a long stick close by, Dane picked it up and held it in front of him. When he was within poking range, he nudged the man gently in the ribs. Hey, Dane called out. You okay, man? Dane poked the man again, this time a little harder. Hello? He tried once again. Buddy, are you alive? Living through the worst war in recorded history, Dane was no stranger to death and gruesomeness. At a particular time, it was quite common for a civilian to see dead bodies litter the streets. Even still, some things never became easier to deal with. The man was definitely dead. The cause of death was unclear, but at least it wasn't Allie. Seeing some tracks in the dirt, Dane had a better idea of which direction he should take. After walking about 15 feet, he stopped and went back to search the body. Finding anything in the woods could be a godsend, let alone another person. Granted, the man was deceased. Nevertheless, it didn't change the fact that he could be carrying something of value. Dane wasn't ignorant of this fact. He crouched beside the body and patted his pockets. There was a small lighter, which Dane fished out and confiscated. Flipping the body over, Dane tried not to look at his face, which was a bloody mess. 
Searching the front pocket of the man's shirt, Dane found a lighter and a protein bar, still sealed in its wrapper. He pocketed the lighter and wasted no time ripping open the packaging of the protein bar, devouring it. It only occurred to him after he had eaten half of it that he should save some for Allie and the others. He folded the wrapper to seal the bar back up and shoved it in his pocket. The next thing he found, attached to the man's belt, was a pocket knife, another absolute score in this environment. Even the belt itself would likely have some utility. Dane removed the belt and then fastened it back together, creating a closed loop with the tools still attached. He slipped the belt over his head and one arm like a sash and continued to search. There was nothing else on the man that Dane wanted, so he stood up and resumed his search for Allie. Dane had been walking for over an hour, and his energy was once again depleting. With no other choice, he removed the half-eaten protein bar from his pocket and ate the rest of it. The satisfaction was indescribable. He tossed the wrapper and continued on. On several occasions, he wondered if he could find his way back, or if Allie was even missing. For all he knew, she was back at camp, telling stories around the fire. But a small sliver of doubt crept in. Allie could be in serious trouble. Lauren mentioned two men, and Dane had only come across one. What if the other man had Allie, he thought. What am I going to do if I find her? Dane wasn't exactly the best person to send on a rescue mission, but he was all she had. It was time for him to man up and face danger head on. A thousand thoughts ran through Dane's mind, from his ex-girlfriend leaving him, his fears of being lost and dying in the forest all alone, never seeing any of his friends or family again. Even if he did somehow survive on his own in the woods, rescue Allie, and together they find their way back to camp, his current predicament still loomed. He thought maybe he was better off just leaving his squad behind and fending for himself. Dane put those thoughts to rest and kept moving, putting one foot in front of the other. It wasn't long before he heard something in the distance, a sound sweeter than the most harmonic melody. The unmistakable sound of a rushing current caused Dane to pick up his pace. Emerging through the dense brush, Dane was delighted to see a glorious and pristine creek. He dropped to his knees and began crying. It was as if he had received a blessing from the universe. He returned to his feet momentarily, ignoring his achy body, and stumbled toward the water. When he reached the creek bed, he once again got down on his hands and knees and dunked his entire head under the cold, flowing water. It was exhilarating and gave him a second wind. Dane began slurping up the water incessantly, as he could hardly satisfy his insatiable thirst. He could feel the cold water going all the way down and filling his stomach. It was the most satisfying feeling he had felt in a long time. Taking a moment to cleanse his hands and his face, he almost forgot what he was doing out there. Allie was still missing and presumably in danger. Time was of the essence. Upon taking another drink, Dane saw something out of the corner of his eye that was almost even more exciting than finding the creek. With a furrowed brow, he turned his head, stood up, and swallowed hard. He could not believe his eyes. <laughs>